Hello everyone, welcome back to Louis B's Music Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video, a gig review rather than an album review. Uh, because about a month ago I saw Ferris Sanders live at a festival called We Out Here. And this video is going to be dedicated to just trying to recall what it was about that performance that made it so special to me. I've been thinking about doing a video on this particular gig for, a, well, ever since I saw it, I was like, yeah, this will make a good video. But I think um, in light of his recent passing, Ferris Sanders' recent passing, I, fig I figured this would be not the greatest send-off, but the best that I could do. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into the sort of review slash, it's more of a story rather than a, like a formal review which is bad because I'm terrible at storytelling. Uh, I'm better at just giving you the facts, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So some context. This, um, it was a Sunday, so it was the final day of We Out Here. Ferris Sanders was one of three headliners that day on the main stage. And yeah, the final day of the festival is the, like the final push, I think one last concerted effort to enjoy some music. Everyone's probably a little worse for wear, whether that's any intoxicants that have been taken over the last few days, or just the lack of sort of mod cons that you'd usually expect from 21st century living. So yeah, a sense of unity, everyone coming together, final day, it was very, a very sort of something in the air, you know. And this was only furthered by the fact that Ferris Sanders himself was, well, his band were an hour later than they had planned to be, maybe even more, I can't remember. But they came on over an hour later than the slot. And there was this real, like, I think um, everyone was quite excited when they, they announced that he would be coming on. All the young people had stayed, all the people who probably weren't even alive when Ferris Sanders was putting out his seminal albums from the 60s and 70s they still stayed to come and witness this yeah this great this jazz great it's just a great feeling i could really talk a little bit about just the stage presence because this follows on from how <laughs> how we were sort of kept waiting they had this delayed gratification from waiting over an hour there's this sense like the stage presence that um Ferris sanders had throughout the whole gig it's just incredible he sort of did so much with so little. He wasn't there cavorting about. He was really, he just sat still on his chair and basically directed the whole ensemble using the slowest of hand gestures, a raised hand perhaps, lowering slowly to signify bring the energy down. Not once did he look behind it that I could see anyway. I think he was just relying on like the trust in the ensemble to be able to work out what he meant from just these simple hand gestures. Another thing, yeah, I'm reminded of another thing that happened that was just so great. At one point during one of the songs, this movement was started by Ferris Sanders, probably slower than I did it there. And then you just see in the crowd, everyone just starts swaying. And you're like, wow, what a hold this guy has over an audience aged, what, 80, 81, sat down, not moving really, just moving his hands, getting a whole crowd behind him. It's just, <laughs> yeah, incredible stage presence. What was better than the stage presence, obviously, was the music. That's why I'm talking about this, this gig now. Yeah, the music was really something to remember. I'm going to talk mainly about the first two songs, but the rest were great as well. I think four songs were played, if I remember. The first song was all about sort of easing us in. It was an improvisation based around chords that were predetermined. I don't know what the tune's called, but I love it. it sort of features lots of long tones from Pharaoh Sanders over the top of these nice bubbling sort of arrhythmic sounds coming from the piano and the drums. All underpinned by a, a low thrum from the bass, which is who's, who's sort of playing these, if I remember rightly, sort of droney fifths kind of things. It's just a lovely sound. 
it captivated me. I was like, holy shit, this is going to be a good gig based on the um, first song there. And during it, me and my partner walked. So we sort of left our place on the bank to join the crowd because we were like, shit's going down right now. We need to, we need to get into the action. And then we're chilling out on the bank. Um, and yeah, it was just this blanket of sound, that first song, a real blanket of sound. But yeah, that blanket of sound made that the second song almost feel like the blanket had been... Whew, the floor had been sort of taken out from underneath us. Yeah, that second song was absolutely gut-punching, really powerful. And we saw this sax player, who I only realised later was Ferris Sanders' son, when they announced him near the end, come on and start playing the solo over two chords, literally two chords, alternating chords. But those alternating chords were made cosmic by the ensemble, whose comping was second to none, really. Something about the, the hypnotic changes of chord, back and forth and back and forth, along with the groove from the drums, which never really broke away tempo-wise or feel-wise. Obviously, he was improvising the whole time, but the groove stayed the same, and this hypnotic, hypnotic groove just kept battering me. And, the, and, and all of us in the crowd, obviously. And over the top of that, Ferris Sanders' son, just absolutely shredding and building up this catharsis that was really... Like, I would try for a good minute to stop crying, but I just couldn't help it. There's just the streaming tears dropping onto the floor. A little bit embarrassing, actually, but then after after I'd sort of done it, I was like, ah, fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. It's a, it's a festival. No one's really looking at me anyway. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was quite special, actually, this, this song. Just the, the mounting intensity of it just bringing me to tears. Those first two songs were enough for me to be sold that this was one of the, the greatest gigs I've probably seen or one of the greatest gig experiences I've had. But yeah, obviously, later on there was more songs played. I think two more. One of them was a rendition of The Creator Has a Master Plan, which, in my opinion, sort of outdid the original. It's just, again, that comping. The comping, oh my goodness. The comping from these these men. I, I can't remember the names of them. I know the drummer's called Gene... Calderazzo, maybe? Um, anyway, the names are here. Comping from these guys really elevated these compositions, brought them into, like, into a more modern context. But um, also the humbling quality of the compositions that Ferris Sanders made really kept those three musicians who were masters of their craft, kept them disciplined, and, and as a result, I think, allowed them more scope for freedom. So really it was the combination of incredible players and a composition that was just born of love. Not born of... Yeah, just, yeah. A composition made with love. That's what I'd say. I'm going to stop babbling now. Just finish by saying that me, myself, my partner realised soon after this gig that We'd seen something special and we were humbled by it. Humbled by this man, this legend, who's influenced so many. Get up at the age of 81 and lift his horn and play again for us. Humbled even further, knowing that that was, that was to be probably his final performance before, yeah, his passing. I just want to end by saying, rest in peace. Thank you for the wonderful gig. And the albums as well. I'll certainly be deep diving into those <clears throat> on the strength of this performance. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comments what songs, what albums have inspired you from Ferris Sanders. And yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. See you in the next video. <laughs>